what we're going to be going over here is the cost recovery method here for a sales contract. Now this is where you realize profit only when the cash collections exceed the total cost of goods sold or the cost of the property here that you sold. So for example here we're going to have sold some property here for $500,000 and it has a cost of $300,000. So what we're going to have is we're going to have re receive some cash payments here and it's over a three year period here. We're going to be looking at years 20x1 through 20x three. Now, since uh, using this cost recovery method here, you're not going to realize any gross profit here until uh, you recovered all the cost here on the sales of this, in this case, the property here. So what I've done here is I've set this up here in table form here, and we'll look at it here, where we got our cash received, and that we're going to be showing here for years uh, 20x1 through 20x3 here, show those amounts here. Then what we're going to have is we're going to look at the balance of the unrecovered cost here. So we're going to start out with uh, at the beginning here, we're going to have unrecovered cost of $300,000. And as we uh, receive these cash payments, then we're going to determine whether or not there's when we uh, recognize any gross profit. So let's look at our first uh, year here, 20x1. Well, we received the cash payment here of $240,000. So we have a balance of unrecovered cost here of $300,000. So in this case, for the first year here, we have recovered $240,000 worth of the uh, a, a re cost on this here since we received the cash payment here of 240000 So uh, what's remaining here is unrecovered cost balance difference here between our 300000 what we started out with, and what we recovered here in this first year of 240000 So we still have $60,000 worth of uh, unrecovered cost here uh, that we have to uh, re uh, get, receive cash payments on before we can realize any gross profit. So for the first year here, zero gross profit. Okay, so now let's go look at our next year here, 20x2 here. So we received the cash payment of $180,000. Now we only have $60,000 sitting here in our unrecovered cost here that we have to um, look at here before we can realize any gross profit. So we are unrecovered, uh, realize now our original. Uh, a cost recovered here would be we recovered the total 60,000 that was re in our beginning balance here because we received cash payments of 180,000. So here's the case here where we own our recovered cost here 60,000 compare that to our cash receipts of 180,000. So here we're going to realize gross profit of 120,000. That's here in year a 20x2 here. And then for 20x3 here, well, we don't have any unrecovered cost here that we have to, uh, any balance in the unrecovered cost. So the total cash receipts of 80,000 here you get recognized as gross profit here, realized of 80,000. So here's the case here. Our total gross profit realized equals 200,000. So that was simply the difference between our total cash receipts here of 500,000 and our to original cost here recovered of 300,000. So you just remember we had the sold the property here for 500,000 had a cost here of 300,000. So our total gross profit realized here at the end of the third year here is 200,000. Now we could alternatively look at it in this form here if this would help any. So we have uh, lay it out here in 20x1, 20x2, and 20x3. Our cash collection that I'm showing the same as we had above here. So here is the case here where we, I'm just totaling up our total uh, collected uh, cash here over, over the over the years here. So for 20x1 we had 240,000 and then uh, for the 20x2 we received that 180,000 our next payment so we're up to 420,000 and then in 20x3 we received the last payment of 80,000 so we're up the total cash collected of 500,000 here. Okay so now what we're going to look at is 20x1 here. We're going to have the revenue, we're going to recognize revenue here uh, of 500,000 and our cost of goods sold that was 300,000 the cost of our property here. So, what we're what I just want to point out here for 20x1, we report our revenue and our cost of goods sold in the period of sale here when you're using the cost recovery method here. So, difference between our revenue and our cost of goods sold, that 
is going to go into deferred gross profit here. And for the year 20x1, since we didn't, uh, we hadn't recovered our costs here, our total deferred gross profit balance is $200,000 here. But now, looking at 20x2, our uh, total collected here uh, at the end of the year 20x2, we have 420,000, and compare that to the cost of goods sold here of 300,000. So you can see what's going on here. Your realized gross profit here is 120,000 because our total uh, collected of 420,000 less or subtracting out our cost of goods sold that gives us 120,000. So we um, co collected $120,000 more than our cost of goods sold. And then for the final year here, well, we just have the 80,000 here. So uh, deferred gross profit here, uh, we would have, well, let's go back here to 20X2. Our deferred gross profit was 200,000 and our realized gross profit here was 120,000 for the year here. So our deferred gross profit balance is sitting at 80,000. So starting out here for 20X3 here, we have our deferred gross profit here of 80,000. Since we covered, recovered all our costs here in year 20X2, uh, total uh, realized gross profit is $80,000. So deferred gross profit balance here is zero at this point. So what we've done here is we've just looked at two different forms here her, of uh, how we'd calculate our gross profit realized here, both looking at our uh, calculations up here in our table up on the top, and then our alternative method here, looking at our calculations in our table at the bottom here. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at how we'd record these here. So, all right, so let's look over here on our accounts, how we'd record them here. So what we're gonna be concentrating on is our contract sales here on our income statement and also how we interact that with our cost of goods sold and what we're gonna, let's just go down here, our deferred gross profit here versus our realized gross profit. Okay, so first let's just look at uh, at the, let's move over here and look at here. Let's. This is with the key here. Our property was sold during 20X1. Sometimes during the year 20X1 we have sold a property. So our sales and our cost of goods sold uh, what we're going to do is we're going to close those out at the end of 20X1 and then we're going to set up a deferred gross profit account. And just looking at it, uh, uh, gross profit here is simply the sales that we had here of 500000 less our cost of 300000 gives us the gross profit here of 200000 But before we go in and we set up our uh, deferred gross profit account, let's just look at how we... Uh, record this sale here at the initial beginning here. So we're going to have our accounts receivable. We're going to have debited that here for 500000 And then over on, and that's on our balance sheet. And then on our income statement, we're going to have the contract sales here. And this is where we're going to report our sales and our cost of goods sold in the period of the sale. So contract sales get credited here for $500,000. Uh, remember, accounts receivable got debited here for 500000 And then our cost of goods on our sales here, we would debit that here for $300,000. And then, uh, as we mentioned, and we'll go into that here, uh, that was when we sold, we set up and we uh, at the beginning when we initially sold the property here. And then just uh, moving over to our accounts receivable here, those are, we would reduce our accounts receivable based on the cash payments, credit or reduce our accounts receivable. And that's over the next three years here. And then our, we would recognize cash here or debit or increase our cash account based on the cash payments here. And then one other thing here, uh, for our property here, uh, that's uh, a property account or like an inventory account here on our balance sheet. We would have uh, credited that here for the cost here, reduced our property account here for $300,000 here. And then our cost of goods sales uh, on sales here, we would debit that here for $300,000. So that's how we initially set up our accounts here. But let's go look at this contract sales here and our cost of goods so, uh, sales here and also our deferred gross profit and how we'd rec uh, recognize that as realized gross profit on these sales. Okay, so again, going back to our fact here that our property was sold in, during 20X1 here, just for example. So our sales and our cost of goods sold are going to be closed at the end of 20X1 and a de deferred profit is, uh, deferred gross profit here is going to be recorded here. So uh, looking at the end of 20X1 here, 
you would and this is how you handle that you just close out your uh, contract sales here debit that here for five hundred thousand dollars you closed out that now our cost of sales here you would credit that here for three hundred thousand dollars so you closed out that account so what uh, the balancing entry goes into deferred gross profit here again at the end of 20x1 here credit that for two hundred thousand dollars simply the difference between our sales and our cost and remember this deferred gross profit account is a contra account to our accounts receivable up on top okay so now uh, recognizing our uh, looking over to our realized gross profit on the sales on our income statement here again so each year here at the end of 20x2 here we would have reduced our deferred gross profit here by hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars and then we would uh, so we debit our deferred gross profit for hundred twenty thousand and then moving over to our realized gross profit on the sales here on our income statement we would have credited that for hundred and twenty thousand dollars now that was the cash payments here that we received at and we were only re recording this realized gross profit as we calculated it here where our we recovered all our costs here on the cash uh, based on our cash payments and this is what the amount over the recovered cost here for year 20x2 and then for year 20x3 all we did is a cash payment we would have reduced our deferred gross profit here by uh, eighty thousand dollars and then we would have debited that here and we would have credited our realized gross profit here by eighty thousand dollars here on our income statement so this is how we remember here using this uh, cost recovery method here let's just go back up to it one more time here what we would do is we set up our contract sales here account on our income statement and our cost of the sales here also on the income statement and at the time that we sold the, the property here or the goods here under contract we would have credited or increased our contract sales by the um, the value of that contract here and then we would have debited uh, our cost of sales here that's at the sales date based on the cost of the contract or the property that we sold in this case and then at the end of the first year here when we set up our accounts we would have cr uh, removed our contract sales off the uh, off our um, account here we would have closed that out here by debiting it for in this case the five hundred thousand dollars and then our cost of sales here at the close here at the end of the first year we would have removed that off here so by crediting our cost of sales here for three hundred thousand dollars and then this is where we set up our deferred gross profit account here the difference between our uh, sales cost our sales here and our cost of sales uh, we would have credited that here for two hundred thousand dollars now we don't uh, we only reduce our gro deferred gross profit after we recover all the costs on those sales here the cost of our sales and then we would re reduce our deferred gross profit based on the cash payments that e exceeded the cost of the sales here and then we'd recognize it as realized gross profit on our income statement here credit that here based on the on uh, those uh, costs that exceeded the cost uh, cash payments that we received that exceeded the cost of the sale so that'll take care of our subject here when we're using this cost recovery method here uh, on, for a sales contract